Hey everyone. I um, hope you guys can join in. I'm just going to make sure that uh, my camera looks good. Everything's in place. Let me go ahead and get my iPad up here. Make sure I can see everyone if you have any questions or anything. Um, today, like in my title, I'm going to be doing some foiling. I thought that would be really kind of a fun thing to do today. I know I've had some people ask me before um, if I could do a whole sort of video um, around foiling because there's so many techniques and so many fun things that you can do. Um, and I've been meaning to do that, but the editing and everything takes a lot of time. And so I thought, why don't we do it live? And if anyone wants to join in and ask questions while they're, um, while they're watching, that would be a great option. And so um, I want to show you a few things that you can do with your foiling, um, adding some foiling to cards and to different projects. Um, if you want to know what laminator I use, this is what I use for my foiling. Um, I know there's the mink, which is a great option because it has different um, heat settings that you can change. Um, but I find that a good, just a regular laminator that's not even all that expensive works really well. Hey, Stu from Florida. How are you? Thank you for joining in. Um, so this is my Royal Sovereign laminator. It is very inexpensive. I've put some links down below where you can find this on Amazon and some other um, stores. And this is a nine inch one. So it works great for card making. If you want to do bigger projects, they do have a 12 inch one. So you could look into that. But I find that this works well for my cards. And since it's a little bit smaller, I don't have to worry about um, storage all that much. Um, it fits nicely into one of my drawers. So I want to show you some things here. Here are some examples of different foiling I have done in the past. These are really fun. Um, this um, sort of acetate overlay here is foil. And all I've done is ran it through my foiling or my laminator. Um, and then I added some and things in the back and I sewed it down around the outside. So it's a really fun way that you can make a shaker card. Um, if you sew it down, just make sure that your um, shaker things inside aren't that um, bulky because <laughs> they won't they won't shake around very well but if you get some really flat kind of glitter those will work well also i thought another really fun technique you can do with foiling is using your stamps and this is a layering stamp set um, I put several of the layers of ink and then the last layer I added some transfer gel I'll show you right here this is some gel that you can add to your products or your projects, let it um, dry completely, and then you can run it through your foiler and or your laminator and just foil it. So this one, like I said, is a, it's a layering stamp set. So the last layer I stamped it on with some of that transfer gel and then I layered it and foiled it, excuse me, with some of that copper foil. So I thought that was really pretty. Um, and hey guys, never fail, likes to kick me out all the time <laughs> all the time it happens several times i don't know what it is um did you put the gel on your stamp yes i did and i will show you how i did that because i'm going to do a little bit of that today it doesn't hurt your stamps at all it's um a little bit different of a technique so um i actually have a little card front that i've prepared today that I'm going to be foiling. You can kind of see the gel on there. It's still drying, but all I did was take my um, Concord and Ninth um, Posy Fill-In Stamp Set. I took this stamp, put it on a stamp block, and then just with my finger, I tapped on some of that gel and I stamped it down. And I'll try to show you how you can do that. Um, it's really simple. You don't get like a really nice smooth foil if you notice on these um it's kind of hard to do that with stamping and i wouldn't I, I don't know if it would work really great on sentiment stamps or anything that's really detailed because um it's just a different it, it kind of likes to come up with your stamp as you pull it off the paper so it gives you some of that little texture but it's a really good it's a fun little technique that you can do. So I thought I would show you what it, what it looks like when I foil this. Um, but first I wanna show you, Brutus Monroe has some of these large mixed media tags and they're printed in toner ink so that you can go 
and foil them. And I thought that was really fun and I've, I haven't tried it before. They have a bunch of different designs. I've linked some of these floral ones down below. Um, and this is just what their normal mixed media tag looks like. But I've got some of these and I thought that would be fun to run through my foiler and just kind of show you what it looks like. So um, if you foil something that's printed with toner, um, really easy to do. Let me grab some sheets here. Um, so these are your foil sheets. Now I have a bunch of different ones. This is actually the negative part from this. I always think they're so pretty. I don't want to throw them away. Um, there are some fun things you can do with them, um, but sometimes I don't want to it. So I just have them sitting in my drawer of foils. But um, anyway, I like those negatives. Um, this is some Brutus Monroe foil. I think this one's called Sunset. There's Tide Pool, and I don't remember what this one is called. But these are some foil sheets that you can add to your projects. Let's just use this one today. Now, what you wanna do is grab your sheet, make sure you kinda trim it down to size to fit over whatever you're gonna be foiling. Just trim that down to size. I have some adhesive sticking onto my scissors, so it's trying to stick onto the foil. It doesn't have to be completely perfect. Um, you just don't want a whole lot hanging off the sides because it could kind of get caught in your laminator and get bunched up in there. But you do want the pretty side you do want that to be showing because it's going to stick onto your design and then you're going to peel it off and it's going to be stuck on there and look amazing. So here's my foiler or my laminator. Um, all you do, if you get a Royal Sovereign, I just want to say make sure you have it on hot because it does have a hot and a cold option. You want to use heat when you're foiling with these foils. So just make sure you have this lined up pretty side up and run it through your laminator. Let's see if I can do this. Actually, you know what? Um, one thing that you probably should do when you're laminating, let me just grab a piece of paper here, is um, sandwich it in a nice piece of paper. <laughs> so I just have a thin piece of paper here. Almost forgot about that. It does help if you sandwich it into a piece of paper. That way it kind of holds things together. So you could just take printer paper, which I did not grab a piece before I started because I completely forgot about that. So this is just a, a thin piece of, um, you know, scrapbook paper that I'm gonna use. And then just go ahead and feed that into your laminator. And it takes a, it takes a little bit a um, few seconds for it to go through. Um, it's kind of slow, but the laminator is adding heat and pressure, and that's gonna make that foil stick down to um, your printed items, your um, transfer gel, whatever you're laminating. So you can go ahead and print your own designs if you want to. You just have to make sure that you're using a toner ink. So it would be um, a laser printer not an inkjet printer. It won't work with an ink printer. You have to have a laser. It has to be that toner because that's what the foil is sticking to. Now my laminator, before I got this one, um, it didn't heat up all that great. So I would use to take this out as soon as it came out and run it through one more time. Um, so run it through twice just to make sure it got a lot of heat. I haven't had that problem with this one. This one works pretty good and I have had this one heating up for probably a good 20 minutes. It's been sitting here heating up while I'm um, preparing all my fun foil things. So almost through and then we'll let you guys see what it looks like. This is always the fun part when you get to peel off that foil. Isn't that so cool? And then after you get that foiled, you could go ahead and color it. You could 
paint over it. I mean, this foil isn't really coming off, so you can kind of do um, your mixed media kind of thing, or you can just leave it as is. I think that's really, really pretty. So I have not foiled these tags yet, so I wanted to do that. Um, so I thought that would be fun to kind of show you guys what that looks like. But let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how I stamped out my um, my stamps. So I'm using this, like I mentioned, this and ninth stamp set. Um, let's mm, let me find a scrap paper. Here we go. So what I did for this background is I went ahead and I stamped out this background using my misty and then um so the stamp set you can stamp out the background and then you can fill in the flowers with all of these different stamps and i just chose this one because i thought that would would look nice when it's foiled and um it's it's a uh, sort of a solid stamp i think some of the um, more Detailed ones are a little bit more tricky to do with the gel, but it, it still works. So I'll go ahead and show you, and maybe we'll try that leaf as well. All right, so all I do is I take a little bit of this transfer gel, and I just kind of tap some on using my finger. And it doesn't hurt your stamp at all. As long as you go ahead and just wash your stamp off, um... Even if it dries on there a little bit, it's not going to hurt it. It will w wipe off with a little warm soap, warm water and soap. But I like to keep baby baby wipes handy, a little towel handy while I'm doing this. Okay, so where's my... So I just want to wipe off my fingers here. All right, and since this, you're working with a gel, it's not, a, not an ink, it's a little bit um, different. So um, it kind of likes to slide around when you stamp it down. So just stamp really carefully. And I like to kind of slowly push it down onto the cardstock. Try not to slide it around too much. And then I like to just let it sit there for a few seconds so that some of that gel can kind of soak into that paper. And then carefully pull it off. So you can see it doesn't make a perfect impression. But once you get the, the foil on there, it looks really cool. So you might want to go ahead and if you're going to try stamping with this gel, I'd, I'd suggest um, give it a few, um, you know, practice tries before you actually stamp onto your paper. <laughs> so you can kind of get the feel of it and you know how it's going to work. So let's go stamp this one out again. This one, I don't have quite as much gel on, so I'm going to push a little bit harder than I did with this one and then just kind of lift it off. So the second impression here, you can see, is a little bit better than the first one. So it does take a few tries, so definitely go ahead and practice before you do it on your projects. I'm going to do a few more of these because now that I'm stamping them out, I kind of think... I could foil them and go ahead and die cut them with the coordinating dies and have some fun little um, die cut flowers. I'm going to stamp this one out as well. Let it set a minute and then just peel it off. And that one didn't stamp very well, so I'm just going to try to go back over it and stamp it down a little bit more. Okay, so that one got a little bit more of that gel on there. And, it, and when you're done with your stamp, I just take a baby wipe and wipe it off right away. Hey, Linda, thanks for popping in. We are just doing some foiling. Um, just kind of showing how you can stamp with this transfer gel. So here's the transfer gel. Once it's dry, you can go ahead and foil with it. And like I said, you can just go ahead and... Um, Go ahead and just wipe it off and then let's go ahead and see what it looks like when you stamp out one of these actually you know what sue the gel is really fun um there's actually a lot you can do with it um you can do it over stencils too which i do have um a background that i used to stencil on did it earlier but it's still not dry but i'll give you guys 
a peek at them. So I'm just taking some of this gel, adding it with my fingers really gently, just kind of tapping it on there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp it onto my paper. I'm gonna stamp it kind of in here, save a little bit of room. We'll see what that looks like. So it does, it does work with that one, I think, unless it pulled up some of the cardstock. We'll see what it looks like when we actually go ahead and um, foil it. Oh, hey, Lauren. Thank you for popping in. Foil, I know, foiling is addicting. <laughs> Once you get your laminator out and you get all your supplies out, you're like, I'm just gonna foil all the things. Oh, but thanks for stopping in. Um, Lauren is also on the Brutus Monroe design team and she does some amazing cards. So definitely go check her, check out her blog or go check her out on the Brutus Monroe blog too. So let's go ahead and stamp this one out again. There we go. I think that one's stamped a little bit better. I can see some of that transfer gel. I think the last one kind of ripped up the cardstock. You're welcome, Lauren. Your work is amazing, so I think, and I'm super excited, guys, because Lauren's going to Creativation this year, too. So I get to meet up with Lauren and then Jess, if anybody knows Jess um, from a card, card Day's work. Um, that's her YouTube, and she's also on the Brutus Monroe design team. So I get to meet some crafty friends at Creativation this year. I'm really excited. Hey, B, thanks for coming in. We're doing some transfer gel stamping. Lauren, I still feel like it's a dream to come true, and I've been on the team three years now, so it's I've loved every minute of it. Let's stamp this one out. Um, Linda, you can use a sponge to apply. I've done that in the past, um, and I actually had a designated, um, like a blending tool. I'll show you. I've used like one of these little foam blending things and it works. Um, but I lost the one that I used for my transfer gel and I just kind of figured, um, doing it with my fingers was kind of quick and easy. So I haven't pulled out another sponge, but you definitely can use a sponge to apply to your, um, your stamps. There we go. I feel like once you start doing it, after several tries, it gets better. Like the first few times you're like, ah, this is not working. What am I doing wrong? But as you kind of do it and get a feel for it, it gets a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and let those dry. The good thing about stamping with this transfer gel, it doesn't take a terribly long time to dry if you don't get a whole lot on there, but you do want to give it a, a, make sure it's totally dry. So I don't know if we'll be able to um, foil that yet today. I did mention that you can also apply this over stencils, which is what I did with this one. And where's my stencil? I know it's here somewhere. Here it is. So this is um, this is the stencil I use. You just put it over your cardstock, and then I like to use a little palette knife and just scrape it over, um, and then just give it time to dry before you run it through your laminator with your foil. And this one <laughs> was looking really good until I accidentally set my Misty on top of it because I forgot that it was there and I was still drying it. So I kind of messed up some of the stripes, but oh well. You can see um, here, this is starting to get clear. Once it's totally clear, then it's dry. And then you can run it through your, um, your laminator. Um, how long does it take to dry? Uh, it kind of depends on how much you put on. Um, like I did this one maybe, what time is it? Maybe a half an hour ago. And since I put it over the stencil, it's a little bit thicker and it's still not dry. Um, but this one I did probably, I want to say like 20 minutes ago. And it's getting clear. I can see that it's drying. It's not completely dry. Or maybe it is. Some of these are dry. That's not quite dry yet, but um, it just kind of depends on 
maybe your climate too. I guess if you're in a little bit drier of a climate like I am right now. Um, so I would say this one's taken about 20, 25 minutes because these are feeling dry. Maybe we're going to be able to laminate this soon or foil it. Um, I just think this little part over here is not completely dry. It still feels a little tacky. But yeah, I'm really excited to um, foil those. I can't wait till that's dry so that we can see what it looks like. Um, can you put some more gel where it's missing? You probably could if you just took a little bit of your knife and just kind of gently scraped some on. You definitely could probably do that. Um, and I really love this gel. I think it's one of the um, my favorite things to use with the foiling because you can use your stamps with it. Looks amazing. Um, B, you can you can dry it with your heat gun. Um, I would suggest letting it dry, um, air dry, just because sometimes it will kind of bubble up. Um, I think, well, I mean, why don't we just try to see if that will dry? With my heat gun. Most of the time, if I know I'm going to be doing a lot of foiling, I kind of make a bunch of backgrounds, even the night before, let them set overnight, and then foil them the next day. But let's see what happens if we try to speed up this process with our heat tool. So the heat tool does definitely help it dry. I think you wanna be a little bit careful because the heat is gonna make it a little bit sticky again um, because that's how it kind of holds on to that foil. When you run it through your laminator, it presses it down with the heat so that foil sticks. So if you're gonna use your heat tool, just make sure you don't, um, you don't touch it to smear it or anything. But I think that's pretty much dry now. And I'm really excited about this background. So I think I'm gonna go and see if I can already run it through the laminator. Um, now, the idea I had in mind for this card was to use, um, let's see here, um, to use some of this black. Just make like a white, or not a white, a red and black. Is this black? This one's not the black. Here's the black. I was wondering why I didn't have the um, the lid on because I knew my black was um, new. So this one is the black. This one is pewter. So this is more of a um, silver metallic kind of one, which is actually really fun, really cool. But that's not the one I wanted for today. I'm gonna be using my black deco foil. So let me put that away. Thanks, Lauren. I'm getting excited now. I really want to see what this looks like when it's um, when it's foiled. Okay, just pop up that lid. So here's the black foil. So I typically go with like you know golds, um, brighter colors, but I thought let's switch it up a little bit. Let's use some black and see what happens. Because I don't know if you guys have noticed, <laughs> but um, the craft world is already turning to Valentine's Day. Um, now that Christmas is like, what, four or five days away, everyone's looking for the next thing, which is Valentine's Day. So I was thinking, how about a little bit of red and black for maybe a Valentine's kind of card? All right, let's see. I want to make sure that I have everything covered. There's something sticky on my cardstock. And then you just want to trim it down. Trim it down to size. Keep your little bits because you can always use that to foil other things. Also want to trim down this side here. All right. 
and make sure it covers all of your your transfer gel so that it's nice and um, will get foiled. And then you just want to put it in your piece of paper. You can use printer paper. Um, a thinner paper usually works best. So I'm just using a piece of thin scrap of paper that I have on hand. Usually I use just a regular, you know, thin flimsy piece of printer paper. And let's go ahead and run it through our laminator. I'm so excited to see what this looks like. All right. So, I mean, if the heat tool works, I could speed up the drying process over on that striped background and we can foil that one as well. Cause I have an idea for that one too. I am using some of my Concord and Night stamps that I got on some Black Friday sales. Super excited because I love all things black. Um, not Black Friday, all things Concord and Ninth. No shims. Um, I don't have a shim in here. I just kind of put it in my paper sandwich. Is that what you mean? Like if you put another piece of cardstock in there or something for more um, pressure. I just I just put the foil on top and then I put it in my little um, thing. I know if you get the, I think it's the mink. I think they have envelopes that you put it in to run it through. Um, I could be wrong though because I don't actually have a mink. The mink is a good option. Um, it has different heat settings. It's just a little bit more expensive. Right, okay, so yeah, no, I don't use any shims. I've never actually tried that. Um, I feel like it works, maybe this is just for me, maybe it works a little better without a shim because I want that heat to um, really get through to my foil. All right, so you can see already where it's kind of sticking to the transfer gel. So we know it's stuck. See what it looks like. Look at that. How cool are those flowers? I mean, um, you can see that it's not a smooth impression with that gel. It's got a little bit of texture because that's just what happens with the stamps. But I think that's really fun. And if you fill in all of these little things, um, with your stamps, that's going to be a fun background. So we'll do that, but I also want to see how this one foils. This is the one we stamped out with the leaves. So let's run that one through as well. I'm going to try it on a little bit. Because I was actually thinking this one would be fun to foil and then die cut all those little pieces. Because I also have the coordinating dies for this stamp set. Thanks guys, I think this is pretty too. I love that shine. I was kind of wondering how the black would look, um, but I think it looks really cool actually. So let's run that one through as well. Now I haven't had any problems with my paper getting jammed up in this one. Um, only if I'm really trying to shove something through. <laughs> you just kind of have to let it grab that paper and pull it through on its own. Don't really try to shove it in there um, too hard. Have, have you guys tried the foiling before? Any of the um, transfer gel or anything? There's also, oh, I haven't even showed you guys yet. There's also clear transfer sheets um, and lots of fun things. I was gonna show you guys those, so I'll show you that in a minute because those are fun, especially for shaker cards. I know Lauren's done a lot of really cool shaker cards with those clear transfer sheets. Almost through. It's worth the wait, definitely. <laughs> Not the gel. I actually love the gel. Once When I first got it, I'm like, what do you do with this stuff? But after you, I mean, if you like doing mixed media, if you like doing, um, you know, stencils or anything, I think the gel is really fun. Oh, Gracie is really fun Fun to watch all of her creations. She does some really amazing things. I absolutely agree. All right, so definitely stuck to all of those images. 
I don't know if you guys can see the shine, but let's go ahead and peel it off. So I think that looks really neat. Look at how shiny that is. We could go ahead and die cut those flowers and then kind of pop them up on top. So we'll, we'll start making a card here soon. I just want to show you real quick um, some of these transfer sheets. So here are the clear transfer sheets. Um, you can go ahead and foil these. You want to make sure that you put the foil on um, the right side. So this side is just smooth and shiny. The toner is printed on this side and you will feel it if you run your finger over it. Um, you will feel that texture and that raised, um, raised stuff, <laughs> I guess. And so that's, um, you want to put your foil on this side um, to make sure you foil the right side. Oh yeah, Sue, so I was I was scared to do start laminating, or not laminating, foiling at first too, because I didn't really know what to expect, but it's really fun to do. And once you start doing it, you, you just want to foil all the things, basically. Um, so there's a lot of different desi designs of these clear sheets. This one's like, I forget what it's called, like coffee rings or something. But these are, I like this one. I like these polka dot ones. Let's go ahead and foil these. I think that's fun. I have an idea for, I think I have an idea for those polka dot ones. Oh, here, I'll use this one. This one's cut down a little bit. Yeah, once you start, you don't stop with the foiling. Should we do gold? Here's some gold. Here's all the colors I have. I've got some of this jade, which is sold out at Brutus Monroe, but you can probably get it um, other places. And then this one is wild cherry, which is really fun. Really love the gold. I love the palette. We've got some ir iridescent. So that one's really cool. Um, and this one I really love. This one is shattered glass. So it's that gold, but it's got um, all of those different shapes in there that kind of catches the light. So really fun. Yeah, you're welcome, Sue. Yes, Linda, I agree. I love making shaker cards with these. I mean, it just, it's like the perfect, perfect material for a window. Let's see. I think I want to do, let's do some of this iridescent on this clear toner sheet. This one's really fun because you can see all that rainbow of colors that the light picks up. Got a little sheet here that's like cut down to perfect size. Now, I probably need to get a little bit more organized with storing these. I know some people use them and store them in binders, like with some of those protective sleeves, which I think is a fantastic idea. I just kind of roll them back up into the little um, tubes that they come in and throw them back into my um, drawer. So I probably need to do a little bit better organizing, but. Ooh, you got some from a Black Friday sale. Aren't those Black Friday sales really fun? Okay, I wanna make sure I get the right side. I'm pretty sure it's this side because I'm feeling a little bit more texture. But this one's a little bit hard to figure out. I'm pretty sure it's this side. I'm trying to look at, at it in the light. Yeah, I definitely think this is the side. Because um, this side is a little bit more shiny on those spots. This side, you can see the black is a little bit more matte. So this is going to be the side that I'm going to foil. So the only tricky thing with these um, clear transfer sheets is just getting the right side. Is that going to fit in my paper? I think it should be okay. There's a little bit sticking out, but I think it'll be all right. Okay, let's go ahead and run that through. Oh, bye Lauren, but thanks for stopping in. It was nice to say hi to you. Ooh, you bought a white. That sounds good. I've changed my mind. I'm gonna trim this down so that it's not sticking out the side. I just don't want to cause any laminator problems. So I'm just gonna trim a little bit off. I 
I think a white foil would be really, really pretty. Of course, I like white everything. <laughs> so if you like my cards, you notice I use a lot of that white, white space, clean and simple cards. All right, let's run this all through. And then the hardest part is just waiting, waiting for it to run through the laminator. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I first saw foiling. I'm like, who even thought up this magic? I mean, <laughs> it's just so, so fun to do. You can use, oh, you know what's a really fun thing to use these for as well, is if you do any of the, of the memory planner or anything, if you use these clear toner sheets to make like dashboards or any like um, photo kind of layouts or pocket pages for your planners, that looks really cool too. Last minute Christmas cards, yay! <laughs> I've definitely been there, Belinda. Like you think you have them all done and then you're like, wait, I have these people I have to give a card to as well. So you have to quick hurry up and make a few more. Usually when I'm in that situation, I just kind of recreate a card that I made before that's um, not that hard to make. <laughs> or do you do all of yours the same? Do you, do you guys pick just one, one style of Christmas card and just make like 50 of them? Or do you make each one different? I always tend to do each one different just because I'm doing so much um, design work for um, Brutus Monroe and some other things that um, I end up having enough different Christmas cards anyway when I'm done. All right, so I'm just gonna let it cool down a little bit, but you can definitely see it stuck to those spots. So let's go ahead and just peel that off. So fun. Look at those spots. They're like rainbow. Oh my goodness. I'm having thoughts like a unicorn stamp or something to go with this one. So pretty. Okay. So now that we have that all um, laminated and I do love to keep my background or like the negative part because I always feel like I'm going to use it on something. Um, anyway, so let's set that aside. Let's go back to this and kind of build a card with it. Oh, thanks B for coming. We're so glad you were here. Yeah, the gel is really fun. Okay, let's see, what can we do with this? Let me trim it down to card size. Now that I have like <laughs> deco foil stuff all over my, all over my desk. All right. Um, Let's see, five and a half, perfect. Four and a quarter by five and a half, right? That's A2 size. So let's go ahead and trim that down. Is this four and a quarter? Four and a quarter. It's a little bit wide, so let's trim it down. Oh yeah. There's a lot of really good Christmas stamps this year. I'm like blown away by all the companies. I'm like, can I just buy everything? <laughs> I mean, my bank account says no, but um, I want to. We didn't take a um, Christmas uh, family picture this year either. So I just, I just sent out cards. I didn't send out pictures or anything. That's a good idea. So do you make like batches? That's actually a really good idea. You can make batches of the same style of cards so that you have like different styles, um, but you can kind of mass produce at the same time. So I'm just trying to like dig through all of my um, mess here. I wanna find the dies and die cut some of these. Or maybe I should, oh, here's my dies. They're underneath all of my deco foil. All right, so here's the dies that coordinate with this stamp set. Um, I really love these little um, envelopes. These are from Brutus Monroe. Perfect for holding all your small die sets. Um, I also do the, um, what do you call it? The magnet sheets to stick them on there, but I like these, these envelopes. They're really good for storing those. Okay, 
Maybe we'll die cut these later. Um, let's go ahead and stamp this out. I just want to think about what color I want to stamp everything. Do we want to go... I'm going to be stamping over the foil, so I don't know how that's going to look. Do we just want to stamp it out in black, maybe? We can do a solid. Let's not do the solid. Let's do this one. And then we'll go ahead and stamp them out. Die cut them? You guys want to see me die cut them? <laughs> what someone does? With my die cutting machine. So here's all the little die cuts. We could just layer some of these on our background. If you get black spots, is that user error or laminator area? Um, black spots trying to think um like what black spots from the um foil maybe like if it doesn't fully um fully transfer on the foil um if it doesn't fully transfer you might just need more heat also I've been hearing some people say you have to get the foil in the right direction like you have to go with the grain um, I haven't noticed that quite as much since I'm doing more stamping you're not seeing all of that um, but um, here's our transfer sheet it pretty much transferred really well there's a few spots that maybe look a little distressed but that's also kind of the um, the design but over here it didn't transfer or did it here on this edge it didn't because that was kind of hanging over the edge um, but I would say that's more of a, yeah, not completely foiled. I would think, I would say that's more of a, um, your heat, your laminator maybe isn't quite hot enough, or maybe you need to put your foil in the right direction. Maybe I have to, oh, you can kind of, yeah, you can kind of see the grain of the foil. I don't know if you guys can see on camera, but there's lines going this way. So I think what you need to do is go with the grain. I could be completely wrong here. I might need to, <laughs> I might need to do a little bit more research, but I think you need to go with the grain and make sure your laminator is hot. So that's what I would say. Yeah, I didn't know grain either, Sue, but um, apparently it does, because if you look really closely, I can see lines. Is a way not to waste so much foil? Um, I think if you just kind of down so it can fit, um, better on your background, but you can use these negative pieces on other projects. So keep them and it's not a total waste. All right, let's go ahead and build this background. So I already have some of these, um, pieces die cut. I don't know if I like that or not. You're welcome, Linda. So we could kind of layer some of these on here if we wanted. I don't know if I'd use this color. Um, or we could just go ahead and stamp some things out. Let's try that. You know what we should try? We should try to see if we can emboss over a foiled, emboss over a foiled, a foil. Emboss over the foil. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's add some of our embossing powder so that doesn't stick. And then here's my ink. And what should we use? What color? You have to cover the cardstock with transfer gel to use the negative. Yes. Um, you can do it that way. You can also use the negative on, like I've wrapped them around candles before. That's just an easy way to show them off. Um, I think you can run them back through and, um, I think it'll stick again. Maybe. Let's see. Gold? Should we do some gold? So, I mean, there's so many things that you can do with this foiling. Like I haven't even tried all the options on my own. Um, but it's definitely something that's really fun to just um, play with and figure out what you can do. 
So I'm going to stamp the centers of these flowers a little bit. Then I'm going to emboss them in gold or my gilded glue. Yeah, you can use glue, I think. Um, I did a project, I think a year or two ago, where I used some glue for the foiling. You can also do, I think, tape runner adhesive. Um, I know Decafoil has lots of different adhesives that you can use to apply your foil. Um, let me get my coffee filter. All right, so let's see what happens if we put some embossing powder on here. Oh, it's sticking. There we go. Maybe I'm making a big mess. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I stamped out this background with pigment ink, and that was like an hour ago, and it's still sticking. Should have hit it with my heat tool. Okay, let me just brush away that extra. That extra powder that is sticking where it's not supposed to go. Just kind of clean up that a little bit. All right. And then we'll go ahead and emboss that and see what it looks like. Oops. I made a total mess with that embossing powder, so let's wipe that away. All right. So let's emboss that. Now that black has some fun gilded scents and I'm loving it. All right, so I'm trying to think here what do we want to do. Do we just want to stamp out some of our leaves on the side? Kind of like that, maybe? Just keep it simple. Let's see what this stamp looks like. This is actually an outline around this stamp if you wanted to stamp that out. I think I'll skip that today. I know I'm kind of liking how it looks. I'm liking how it's turning out. We could actually just emboss the leaves as well. We wanted to try that. Let's just try that. Red and gold and black. And, um, this um, stamp set is actually really easy to um, line things up just because, you know, you know where things go. It doesn't have to be super precise. And I think this one goes here. Um, and then this one, just want to make sure I get all of these leaves. I think I got them all. So let's go ahead and emboss those. Yep, simple. I agree, Linda. Sometimes simple is the best way. <laughs> if I try to do too much, I usually end up messing it up. Okay, I was thinking I was going to kind of brush away so it looks like the leaf is behind, but I almost don't mind it being over that foil. 
Let's just see what, what happened. Let's see how that looks. But my, um, my embossing powder is sticking horribly on the whole background today, which is crazy because I just hit it with my heat tool and I stamped it out like probably an hour ago and I'm using my embossing bag. So I do not know what's going on today. So I'm just going to clean up that powder with my brush. All right, looks good. So let's go ahead and, you know what? It might be the humidity, Belinda, because we we got a little, I think we got a little rain last night. So it's a little, ugh, a little bit more wet today. <laughs> I'm making a mess with my embossing powder. Let me just uh, kind of wipe that up. Today's one of those messy crafting days. <laughs> All right. I think I'm really liking this gold embossing powder on this background. So let's stamp out the other side of leaves. It's always humid in Southeast Texas. I believe you. We just came from Oklahoma and the summers were uh, really humid. <laughs> and that's even north of you guys. So We're kind of getting used to the new um, climate here in California. Is it humid there all year, Sue? Oops, that is not the right. That is not the right one. I wanted to do this one, right? Yeah, we'll do that one. Not quite sure if I can finish this whole card with you guys today. I might have to get going here. I think my kids are waking up. So let's go ahead and emboss these leaves and then I'll probably finish this another time. But hopefully this answers a few questions about um, foiling. If anybody ever had any questions or if it gave you some ideas um, or just gave you a little bit of you know, motivation to go try it on your own is really a fun technique. Once you uh, once you start foiling, you're gonna want to foil everything. I guarantee you. All right, so let's emboss those leaves. My goodness, and it is still sticking to everything. I don't know what's going on here. I mean, it's basically sticking everywhere. I tried to clean that up a little bit. You're welcome, Sue. The gel is so much fun, really. I mean, you could put it on anything and then, um, you know, foil anything. I'm just gonna heat those real quick. This is kind of ending up looking like a Christmas card <laughs> unintentionally. I was kind of, I kind of had like Valentine's Day more in my mind, uh, the gold and the red and the black. It looks like a Christmas card. 
Maybe I should just stick a Christmas sentiment on it and give it to someone. <laughs> All right. Don't get me wrong, I love the gold. It's like my favorite. Okay. I'm just gonna kind of emboss them. Ooh, did you do a lot of foiled Christmas cards? That that would be really fun to receive one. Um, you should definitely show us what it looks like, Linda. I don't know if I've done foiled Christmas cards yet. I do a lot of embossing. I've been seeing that one ink blending technique um, lately where you sort of blend on all the different colors and make like that ombre look. And I think that's really, really fun and amazing. It looks really pretty. So I've seen a lot of people doing that technique lately. Okay, so I'm just gonna emboss those. Those didn't seem to stick quite as bad. All right, so we've got all of our leaves embossed. I agree, Belinda. You never know it's gonna be like, oh, nice card, and then throw it away, <laughs> which is totally depressing because you you know you spend so much time. Um, but I think one thing to remember or ask. I just don't ask what they did with the cards. I don't want to know. Um, but also I just, I like to create. So for me, it's, um, it's just fun creating the card and then whatever they do when I give it to them. I mean, I love it if they treasured it forever, but if they don't, um, you know, I still got my own value out of it, um, just from creating. So hopefully that kind of helps, you know, with that thought of, they just threw my card away. What? No, but, um, I love that background. So I do have some of the products linked below in the description. Um, otherwise, thanks guys for stopping by and doing some laminating with me. Um, I do have to go pick up or get my kids. They're waking up, but hopefully, hopefully this gave you guys some ideas, <laughs> inspired you a little bit to go do your own, um, foiling. But anyway, yeah, I, I definitely make for my own satisfaction too, Linda. I think just the process of creating um, is kind of worth it for me. So, I mean, I want other people to treasure the cards too, but, you know, if they don't and they end up throwing it away, oh well. I had fun creating, so I just don't ask. <laughs> just don't ask. Hey, did you frame my card and put it on the wall? Um, anyway. I think I'll go get my kids now, and um, yeah, hopefully this gave you guys some ideas, but thanks so much. Um, yeah, Merry Christmas to you too, Sue. Merry Christmas to everyone. I hope you have a great holiday. Um, we're going to be going into our holiday weekend. I'm going to do a lot of baking with the kids and probably get some Christmas presents, um, last minute ones wrapped, but that's probably going to be my weekend. So, um, hopefully you guys weekend goes good as well and Merry Christmas and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.